Welcome to the fabulous 50s and beyond. I'm Jim Pollard, your host, and I hope you'll stay tuned because we have a very exciting and interesting program today. We're going to talk about the Paducah Fall Quilt Show. Our guest today is Bonnie Browning, the executive director of the show. She's been around for a while, and I know she has a lot to tell us. You stay tuned, and we'll be right back. And he'd say, go with what you got. Start from where you are. Give it your best shot. Keep reaching for that star. Get in the race. Keep your own pace. Keep moving and never stop. Just go. Hey, go with what you got. Bonnie, it's good to have you back. It's been a while since we've done a show about the quilt show, but uh, since we last did one, you now have the fall show. And this is fall show number what? This is number three. Number three. Yes. Uh, you know me, I'm always, I'm always in game to talk about the quilt shows. I know you are, <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I got. And, and you know, every time I, I, I look at it, I learn more about it. You know, I did not realize you had so much uh, class, so many classes and so much education as part of it. Yes, well, you know, the number one reason that people come to our shows, first of all, is the quilts. You know, the contest quilts and the special exhibits. Number two is the Merchant Mall with the vendors in it. And number three is our educational program. And we hire teachers from all over the world to come in and teach uh, traditional techniques. And we also have people who are going to teach you the very latest thing. Well, that, that, that's what, what amazed me was to see the variety and the number of people that you have here uh, doing the education. And, and I guess you could go start as a beginner up to a top-notch professional and learn what to do. That's exactly right. Uh, we try to make sure that we have something for everyone at our shows. And, you know, we always want to bring those new quilters on board and somebody has to teach them. If they don't come to our show and take a class, I always encourage those people to take a class at their local quilt shop because if they learn those basics, and you know, I've taught basics for 30 years, uh, and so I've done 13 books on quilting with a variety of techniques. A lot of it is basic techniques because once you learn that, then you can go off and do anything you want and still have beautiful quilts. Ah, that's good. You know, uh, it's interesting that you talk about the new growth. Uh, having lived in Florida for 23 years, we, one of the things we learned is that on citrus trees, the fruit is produced on new growth. Is your, does your quilt shows do the same as the newer people bring in newer people? It is, and you might think that those new quilters are, you know, the 18 to 25 year olds. Actually, many people start quilting when they have a new baby coming, they may be the 25 years old, uh, but a lot of people start quilting when it's grandma has a new grandbaby coming and she wants to make that grandbaby a quilt. So we have new quilters that are all ages. Well, that's, that, you know, that, that is interesting. I know we, we talked off show earlier here about uh, baby quilts. They become a pretty popular thing, haven't they? They do, and, and actually wall quilts too. Um, you know, we can only make so many quilts that are big to fill our beds. Uh, and after you've given one to all the family members and they all have a bed quilt, then a lot of people are making wall size quilt like, the, this, like we have here on the table. This is a beautiful quilt here. I made the remark that not only are you a quilter today, but if you're an artist, it helps too. This is a quilt that was made by Cynthia England, and we have a special exhibit of her work. And she, ha she has a technique that she developed. This whole thing is pieced. It might look like it's appliqued, but the whole thing is pieced on a sewing machine. And, uh, and she calls it innovative piecing. Uh, so we'll have a whole exhibit of her work to be able to see at the show. So in other words, if you took this top it's all one continuous piece that she put together. Yes, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, well, it's, yes, it's all, uh, I mean, it's a million different little pieces. If you look at the background of oh, this, I know. I you know. can see that there are lots of tiny little pieces in here, but they're all individually pieced in there. And no applique on it at all. No is, applique at which all. Is, which, is, which is amazing <laughs> when you think about it. And again, it, it's a piece of art. It is. And I guess more of the wall hangings 
have become pieces of art, haven't they? It is, and in our contest, we get more entries in the wall categories, and part of that is because people, number one, they don't take quite so long to finish. Uh, a large quilt may take one year, two years, three years. Uh, for our contest, they have to be made within the last three years. So, uh, so that way we always have the newest quilts being shown at our shows. Well, that's what amazed me. Uh, last, I guess it was last year or year before, I was reading the articles about the quilt show, and uh, one of the winners said it took her like almost three years to finish the quilt. Yes, yes. And, and I guess, and when you think about it, I bet she worked on it some every week at least, if not every day. Well, and many of them do. Uh, you know, it's, it takes a long time to make a bed size quilt sometimes. And, you know, I know that people often wonder about machine quilted versus hand quilted. Uh, we continue to have categories in our contest because we never want to give up the hand quilted quilts. I don't know if you remember in 1989 when Carol Fallert won Best of Show with a machine quilted quilt. That set the whole industry on its ear because that was the first time a machine quilted quilt had won a major award. And, and, and so everybody thought at that point, if it isn't hand quilted, it isn't a quilt. Well, we've, we found out that that is not the case. It still is sewn together just the same, whether you do it by hand or machine. Well, then we went into a period where we had the new long arm, where you drive the head, okay, the commercial style machine. And from 1989, when the machine quilted on a home machine quilted quilt won, it took until 2004, 15 years, before we had one that won the best of show with the long arm machine. Uh, and so that sort of is, it was all hand. 89, it changed when we started the machine. And today we have a mix of all of that. Well, in some industries, change comes slow. Well, you can see it took 15 years uh, in between those two types of machine I'm quilting. Because I must in the beginning, when I heard that the machine quilt had won, I had that thought too. That's not a quilt. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, and you know, I'm a certified quilt judge, and I know that people often ask that question. Is uh, we divide, um, uh, we we give awards based on hand quilting on the home machine, which we call stationary, where the head is stationary, or the movable, which is the long arm machine. Uh, but you know what? When you judge it, there's no difference. The stitches still have to be even. You want to hide the starts and stops. You want to have the stitches close together so it's going to hold that quilt together uh, well. Uh, so when you're judging it from the judge's viewpoint, there isn't any different. The, tr the techniques are different, but the criteria is still the same. And that, it's, it's fascinating to me because, you know, like I said, my wife did quilts, but uh, she did mostly applique. Mm -hmm. And uh, then she would not, put them together, we would find somebody else to put them together. Uh, I, and that's where the quilting, and we, she always looked for somebody to hand do it. Did she? Uh, she mm -hmm. had some, some of the baby quilts she did, she did have machine quilted put together, but uh, uh, some of the big ones she would find somebody to hand, and they're hard to find now. Well, actually, uh, there are quite a few people out there now that are doing quilting for other people. Uh, particularly if, if you want the machine work done on a long arm machine. Uh, there are many people, there, many people are buying those machines to use it as income. Oh, okay. So that they can do quilting for other people. Speaking of income, I, 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 we were talking about our cars a while ago and this newer car that I have, it wasn't brand new, but it was almost new. It has so many parts to it. <laughs> and I was looking at it the other day thinking about what an industry each car creates with all of the different parts that it has. And I have a feeling that the quilt industry has done the same thing. They've done exactly the same thing. In fact, even our home machines now are, have a lot of computerized elements in them. Uh, you know, there are machines now that you take the thread and you pull it here, and it takes the thread and puts it through the needle for you. Oh, really? <laughs> Yes. That's what I need. <laughs> you should see me trying to thread a needle now, you know. But uh, yeah, that, but that's uh, that, that is that's interesting to know. I know that uh, you talk about computers. Uh, this prosthetic leg I have 
has printed circuits in it. It's got a little computer in it sure. and runs on a battery. Sure. And it's it's amazing. So how many vendors do you expect to have this time? Uh, we will have vendors in the that fill up the expo center, and in the pavilion, and on the in the convention center itself. On the first floor, we will have our learning center where we have free demonstrations by the vendors and our instructors. And then we also have the, we will not be using the Finkel building downtown. Uh, they're getting ready to do some remodeling there. So we will have the Finkel booth with the uh, books that AQS has in their Hurt book sale. That'll be on the first floor. And then on the second floor, we're gonna have the wall quilts, the best wall quilt. And then the rest of that floor will be filled up with special exhibits. Quilts of Valor, uh, we've been working with Quilts of Valor all year long, and I don't know if you know about that program, but it's, it's a program where quilters all over the world make quilts, and they're given as a thank you to members, either active or a retired military, um, who've served in some war state. So Vietnam, Korea, World War II, World War I, I think I just saw where they had a World War I donated here recently. Um, but Afghanistan and all of the places that are over there, um, a lot of those people come home and they're um, injured. And, and so that's what started it was um, a woman had a dream about her son who was in Iraq. And uh, there was a military guy there who, and this was her dream that the next thing, next time she saw him in the dream, he had a quilt wrapped around him, and that was what started it. Her son was stationed over there at that time, and now they've given over 260,000 quilts to military folks. Wow, that's amazing! Yes. And so they'll be here at the show uh, at noon on Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. They'll be doing some presentations of some quilts to some local people. Will there be a display of those quilts? Yes, yes. Um, most of them are red, white, and blue, but some of them are brown and some of them are different colors. But uh, the quilters like to make red, white, and blue quilts and they're real patriotic. And so a lot of the quilts of valor are red, white, and blue. Yeah, that's yes. fantastic. They are fantastic people. Uh, we talked about me <clears throat> being Santa Claus. I uh, did some events with the uh, wounded warriors as well as special forces groups yes. at Fort Campbell. Uh, I got tickled. We did one with the Wounded Warriors at the USO, and in their USO building, they have a full-size Huey helicopter, and uh, they made a picture of the wife and I getting right like we're getting ready to jump out of the Huey, <laughs> and they put it up on their Facebook and said, who needs a sleigh when you've got a Huey? <laughs> <laughs> that but, a sense of humor, too, didn't right. they? Right. <laughs> you know, they're um, fantastic people, you know, fabulous people. And, well, and, and you know what? I think we can't thank those veterans enough. No, uh, no. My husband was in Vietnam, and, and the quilters in Des Moines, when we did our show there, gave him a quilt, and he cherished that piece. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, we've got a quilt hanging here behind us. That's right, and I'm sure it's been seen in the background. Tell us about that one. Well, you know, we have a variety of special exhibits, and CAFE Facet, F-A-S-S-E-T-T, -T, uh, is from the United Kingdom, and he's a fabric designer. He also designs uh, things for knitting, and, uh, but he's very, very popular, and he, he, his fabric is a lot of big prints, and you can see in this one, the centers of those are all some big flower out of one of his prints. And so we will have a whole exhibit of his work, and it will be over at the pavilion. Also, one of the best exhibits that we're going to have in the whole show is we will have all 35 of the best of show quilts that have won at the Spring Paducah Show. Oh, the man. museum doesn't own, I think they own all but four. Uh, four of the quilters kept their quilts, but we've borrowed those quilts, so everybody will get to see all 35, and they'll be hanging in the order that they won. And so it will be a real education for everyone to be able to see the very first winner all the way up to today and how the fabric has changed, the techniques has changed, the scale has changed, the amount of quilting has changed in those 35 years. Wow. And that's at the pavilion as well. You know, we keep talking about the quilt weight. 
We haven't even said when it is. Oh, yes. It's, sep it's September 11th through the 14th. And, you know, one of the things that we do different for this fall show is we let the public do the final voting for the best of show. So uh, we will have a team of judges. Three judges will come to town, and they will judge on, on Saturday and Sunday before the show. And they will choose first, second, and third in each of the 15 categories. And then... If they were going to choose the best of shows, those would be chosen from the first place winners. So that's what we open up to the public. On our website, which is quiltweek.com, starting at noon on Monday, September 9th, until noon on Tuesday, September 10th, anyone who has an email address will be able to go to quiltweek.com and place one vote for the vote that the one quilt that they think they'd like to see at the top of the heap. And there's seven big prizes. Um, Best of show is $20,000, and the public will choose that from amongst the first place winners in those 15 categories. Yeah, I told someone today, a friend of mine in Nashville, we were talking uh, about the prize money, and he said, wow, that's amazing, that's a lot of money. <laughs> $121,000. Yeah, yeah, and it is. Okay, you know, we, 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 we talked about when, we talked about uh, the contests and the vendors, and uh, there's one thing that uh, we haven't touched on, which seems pretty unique to me. <laughs> and that's the quilt cake. The world's largest quilt cake will be here on Thursday, September 12th. And it's being baked by Mauro Castano, who appears on TLC's Cake Boss TV show. He's baking the cake at his bakery in Hoboken, New Jersey. He's going to be trucking it down here. He'll be here on Thursday morning. 5.30 in the morning, our guys will be there to help him unload that cake. And we had to build a special table to put it on. It will be four foot by eight foot, six foot tall, and weigh about 2,000 pounds. So Whoa. it's about a ton of cake. Uh, and so, at, okay, so he'll, he'll finish putting it together on Thursday morning. And then at 1.30 in the afternoon, from 1.30 to 2.30, we will have a meet and greet that the public can come in and be able to meet Mauro. And I know we've already had a lot of calls at the office. He's popular with a lot of people who watch that show. And then at 2.30, we will have a, a short program, and that'll inclu include Representative Randy Bridges, uh, Jeff Parker from the County Commission, Richard Abraham from the uh, from the City Council and uh, Diane Santani from Janome, who is the presenting sponsor for the big, the world's largest cake, and then Meredith Schrader, and then we'll have the major cutting of the cake, and then everyone will get a piece of cake. Give us an idea of what the cake will look like. Well, the cake is, it's being sponsored, uh, Janome for one thing, and there will be a Janome machine on the very top of the cake, but some of our other sponsors are Vera Bradley, so there will be a pretty bag uh, from that looks like a Vera Bradley bag. Uh, we have Seminars at Sea is one of the sponsors, and so there will be a, 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 a suitcase-like thing of getting ready to go on a cruise. Fomori Scissors, uh, Siesta Silver, uh, who makes jewelry in the shape of, of different uh, quilt patterns. Uh, and so all of those will have, and all that will be made out of Frosting and fondant, and I don't know what. I guess we'll get to see when they get it here. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing it. Just, you know, I'm inquisitive about it. But it, it's, it, I'm sure it's going to be an exciting event. You know, we've talked about all this, and, and we talked about your sponsors and things like that, your vendors. It reminded me that uh, uh, in the years past, my wife, she was all the time looking for part-time work like I did. And uh, she worked at Hancock's some. She would tell me some of the funniest stories about working at Hancock's. Said those women would come out there and they'd stand up on a table and hold up a cloth and say, <laughs> you got any seeing it like this, you know? <laughs> and the different things that went on. She would tell some really funny stories about what went on out there. Well, you know, buying things uh, with Hancock's and our vendors here, 
uh, you'd be surprised at how many people will ship their dirty clothes home so they can take those prized possessions they just bought home in those suitcases. That's right. <laughs> so you're going on vacation, you take an empty bag to bring home <laughs> what you buy while you're gone. That's right. Yeah, no, yeah, that, that, that's Ooh. funny. But boy, they, they really sell the cloth out there during that time. I know that. They do. But it you, was, you know, sometimes people have a quilt that they want to know, uh, an old quilt maybe that's a family quilt that they want to know what the value of that is. One of the things that we do at our shows is that we have certified quilt appraisers that will be here Wednesday through Saturday uh, where you could bring your quilt in and uh, there's a fee for that but yeah, it, they would be able to tell you a lot about your quilt, how old it is and, and the oldest fabric maybe that's in it. Uh, but that's something too, if people have a quilt, they can always bring those to the show as well. Why we were talking about, we talked about it earlier, but when uh, my mother-in-law died, she had a lot of quilts. And the, the four girls, the four daughters, they numbered the quilts and drew lots to who got uh, the, for the, the quilts. And there was a real old quilt. It, it, it was bad. I mean, it was still in good shape, but bad shape for being its age, you know. And none of them wanted that. And they said, well, we just throw it away. My daughter said, no, you won't. <laughs> and she took it. And then she displayed it downtown a few times. And uh, the women were amazed at it. They wanted to make pictures of it to know how to make it. Or and one lady came in there one day and she said, she was a, a, a an appraiser, and she says, "You got a quilt that's worth several hundred dollars, mm -hmm. if you want to know, mm -hmm. you know." Mm -hmm. And it was amazing how that uh, sometimes older is better. <laughs> that is, it is, and you know, and, and I know sometimes maybe they aren't ter they're more sentimental value than they are monetary value, uh, but you can find that out if you have it appraised. Yeah, well, that's yes. good. That's good. We have some other exhibits I want to tell you about, though. Uh, we normally at our shows show new quilts. We don't show antique quilts. But this time in the pavilion, we will have an exhibit of um, Chris Moline's, some of the quilts from her collection. And they're from like the 1850 to 1900. And these are old, beautiful quilts. So if people like to look at old quilts. Now, one of the other things, along with our world's largest quilt cake on Thursday, if you, the public is invited to come to that. It'll be in the atrium of the convention center. And then after the cake, after they have a piece of cake with us, they can go see the quilts. So there will be no charge for them that afternoon uh, after we do the cake ceremony. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing so much is going on and, and what goes on during. I know that I would encourage anyone to go to your, quilt, to your website. Give them that website again. It's, it's quiltweek.com and then you just choose the Fall Paducah Show. Because it's a full site and there's a lot of information on it, and uh, uh, actually we'll, we'll probably link it to our our site. We're trying to get it back up too. We haven't done anything for years, so we're trying to get ours back up and, and ready to go too. And it's exciting uh, what you actually have going on. Just briefly, I know we don't have a lot of time left, but uh, let's talk about the future of the fall. I know we, we've talked about, are you happy with your attendance? Uh, well, yes, and, and uh, we actually don't, we have not made a decision about next year. You know, we have a lot of people that we represent when we do a show, and that's everybody from the quilters to the teachers to the vendors to the sponsors. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we have to have a show that people can afford to come to. So we'll be looking at hotel rates, uh, other costs that are associated with the vendors. Um, and so we're not going to make that decision for next year until until we do this year's show and see how it turns out. Well, you know, uh, a lot of people do not realize the amount of planning that it takes to put something on like this. 18 months to do yeah. one show. I, I know. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was involved in the planning of the first Santa convention in Branson, Missouri. And we planned, uh, like you say, over a year for that. Yes. And uh, being the first one, boy, I mean, you, you, you really don't know where you're going or what you got to do. And uh, you got to have your speakers, your teachers, your vendors, your, your housing, uh, your, your food, 
everything. And then we had a big Santa parade. By the way, you got a parade too. We do. We, in, we invite the Paducah Tillman High School Band in to open this show on Wednesday morning. That will be the 11th of September. Uh, they'll be here at 8.30 in the morning and they help us open the show and we're going to have the whole band here. And I, I can't tell you whether they have more fun or the vendors have more fun <laughs> or the quilters who we invite to bring a quilt and fall in for a quilters parade behind them. We all have a good time, and it's a great way to open the show. But now, I'm going to tell you just a little secret. You're talking about Branson, Missouri. Um, AQS will be doing a new show in Branson, Missouri, starting in 2021. 21. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that's on our website, but we haven't done much publicity yeah. on it yet. Well, that's, Branson is quite a place. I know uh, the, the kids gave us our, our 50th anniversary celebration there, and uh, we went, went there, and... Oh, we had a great time. And Branson is a good uh, convention center, I guess you could say. It is, it is. And, okay, uh, can I tell you about the hours and stuff for the show? Yes, I thought. Okay, so it's Wednesday through Saturday, September 11th through the 14th. The hours are 9 to 5, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 9 to 4 on Saturday. Admission is $14 a day. If you're an AQS member, it's $11 a day. If you're going to be coming to the show, I would encourage you to go online and buy your tickets in advance. If you do that, you'll be able to print your name badge and you won't have to stand in line when you come to the show. Very good, very good. Well, Bonnie, this, you know, again, it's been exciting and uh, get to be at our, uh, our first show this year. It's, it makes it doubly exciting. And uh, you, you're always full of information. Which, you know, it makes a host job a whole lot <laughs> easier when that person, you, yeah, I've had hosts on, you ask them a question, and they say yes, and then you say, what do we do next, you know? Yeah, there, what's the next question? Yeah. Well, well, you know what, we always have a lot to talk about because we do a lot at our shows, yeah. and we invite everybody from quilt lovers, if you just want to come and see some good art, you're going to see that. And if you love to learn a little bit about quilting, there'll be some free demos in the Learning Center, or you can take a lecture or a hands-on class. Well, Bonnie, it's been good to have you, and uh, we look forward to the show and look forward to having you again later on when we talk about future shows. And for you who watched today and listened, we thank you for being here. And remember our motto, use it or lose it. see as well as I used to Can't run as far or as fast Sometimes I think that the old me Is becoming exactly that But when I start thinking of all I don't have That's when I tell poor me Beethoven was 50 and deaf as a post When he wrote his ninth